Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to make a start on a couple of little things uh, on the SV1000. Um, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to uh, predominantly concentrate in this area. As you can see, we're missing a clutch lever. Um, obviously, the, uh, the heat controller for the grips is absolutely shot away and destroyed. And obviously, we've got a clutch issue uh, with the master cylinder and the uh, reservoir as well. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Um, depending upon time permitting, I may also look at the gear shift there. Um, and that will predominantly then uh, deal with these two issues here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video. Before we get started on this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the screen off, as you can see, it's uh, smashed. So uh, one, two, three, four Allen head bolts and a couple of JS screws. We'll um, whip all of this out and then throw that in the garbage. get this out of the way then it gives us good access to the massive cylinder area for the clutch. What I'll do, I'll pop all of these little fasteners into a into a little bag and mark them all up. New screen isn't that expensive, uh, in fact a double bubble one about 20 less than 25 quid I think on eBay which uh, which is pretty reasonable um, and probably what I'll go for because I'm a bit I'm a taller than average person, so a double bubble is quite useful for me. And last one. I don't think the mirrors need to be removed to remove the screen, but we'll find out in a second. I'm fairly sure we're okay. Right, pull the well nuts out. A bit tight. Come on. Right. I think I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers on these. What I'll do, I'll pull the well nuts out and I'll bring you back in when I got them out. Okay, that's the uh, screen off. Yeah, the well nuts, they need to be pulled out in order to pull it out because they go through the two panels. Uh, but yeah, they just pull out with a pair of, pair of snap nose pliers. Or what, what you can do is just push them in and then it will it'll come out fine. But yeah, that's, uh, that's fit for the scrap heap that is, so that can uh, go in the bin. Right then, obviously keeping all my uh, fasteners together, I'll uh, bag them all up in a little bit. Right, okay. So, looking at this, what we've got here, two 8mm bolts holding the uh, controller onto the bracket for the master cylinder. So, I'll take that off first. Obviously, that's wired into the loom, that goes down to the battery. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get all of that cut out, because it's that's absolutely fragged. And I do have a brand new set, but um, I'll make that a video on its own, uh, fitting of the... Uh, Heated grips can be a video all on its own because um, I'm sure there'd be quite a few people that like to see the process of that. Okay, let me grab some, let me grab the tool kit out and uh, we'll crack on. Okay then, so let's get these 8mm bolts out of the way. These are the bolts that go all the way through and hold the master cylinder onto the bar. Spacer behind there as well. Need to click. There's the master cylinder. Right. 
Okay. Pop them down there. Right. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely destroyed. Um, well, I'll push that out of the way for now. Keep that down there. Push it over there. There we go. Right. I'm going to ignore that completely for the moment. And what I'll do is, uh, when it comes to when it comes to the uh, replacement of the handlebar grips for the new heated grips, which I've got, it's an, an identical set, like for like swap. Um, when I do that video, then uh, I'll get rid of all of that first before I start that video. Um, anyway, back to the matter at hand. Okay, so I've got um, massive cylinders off the uh, the brackets there, completely uh, completely fine. Master cylinder itself looks good. So, I think what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm actually just going to replace the reservoir because whilst I've got the entire master cylinder, I don't think there's anything wrong. Well, on visually, I can't see anything wrong with it. I won't know until I try to bleed it. However, um, I'm just going to replace the uh, the reservoir for now and see how we get on. Um, but I'll come back to that in a moment. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the I'm going to remove the left hand switch gear. Now this is gonna be a bit of a pain to get into but what I'm gonna have to do is come up here with the screwdriver again a JIS and there we go Okay, it appears we've got a bit of uh, the vulcanizing glue solution from when the uh, grips were fitted. Stuck to the side of the, stuck to the side of the switch gear as well. It appears that the glue was everywhere apart from on the actual bar because I could turn the grip. So yeah, that's uh, not really that much cop to be honest. So let me try and get it off what I'll do. If I can't get it to come off, is I'll get a knife on it. But yeah, what I'll do, let me grab a knife and I'll come back to it. Right then. Yeah. The glue was everywhere apart from on the on the bloody grip itself, which is pretty daft. Got there in the end. That was a bit of a that was a bit of a pain. Okay. Right. There's the little stud which normally prevents rotation. But unfortunately the second hand one that I've got has also got the same uh, the same issue. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to uh, find a second hand one that hasn't had the little stud broken off. It's just one of those things. Uh, yeah, to be fair, the bottom half of this is actually looking okay. So what I may do... Is just swap the top half. That way I don't have to... Uh, I don't actually have to then undo all the wiring. Or shall I? I don't know. Let's have a... Let's have a look. If it goes down into the frame, it would be a pain in the ass to get to. If I don't need to, then I won't. Probably be easier just to swap swap the switches over in the top part. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to clean up all this uh, old glue, and I'll bring you back in in a second. All right. Something else I have noticed is at extreme lock, this bar is a lot closer to the tank than this bar, as you can see. So looking down, if we uh, compare the two openings the one in the top top yoke and the one in the actual clip on itself with the same on this side you can see that they don't line up like they do here so 
uh, in the bash that this is taken, this is obviously twisted ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is, it doesn't look like it's bent, it just looks like it's just twisted slightly around the fork. So, what I'll do is try and roughly align it where I think it needs to be, which is there. And then retighten it. And what I'll do is I'll come back and talk that later. Okay, I think that's yeah, that's looking a lot better aligned. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to dig into my uh, dig into my stash of parts that I've got. Okay, as we can see. This is how long the cable is. It comes down underneath the tank. You know what? Bugger it. Let's let's just disconnect it. It's it's that much. I'll disconnect it. I'll lift the tank up, and we'll uh, we'll pop it off. It's not uh, it's not too strenuous a task. I've just been a bit lazy. Okay. the air box is going to have to come out as well. Um, yeah, it's all, they all, all the cables run down this side of the air box. So I think what's probably going to be best is if we pull the air box out and then we'll probably have good access to everything, I would, I reckon. So yeah, that's what we'll do. Right then, let's whip the air box off. few screws holding the lid on. Interesting to see what the state the filter's in, see if it's ever had any love. Judging by how dirty it is, I don't think it ever has. actually not bad. It looks like it's had a, a fairly recent air filter. Um, let me pop that down to one side. Okay, so air box off. Uh, there's just a few uh, um, vacuum hoses, a couple of connections, etc, etc, that need to be taken off in order to get it out. And as you can see, once we're uh, once it's off, we've got access to all of this. Now here's the connector that we uh, want to remove. As you can see, it's that one there. And then we've got these two here, which go down to the horn, which is down here. So what I'll do, I'll pull this yellow connector apart. Now this is a pig and it's really hard. You have to squeeze it really, really hard with your thumb and pull at the same time. And it's a pain in, it's a real pain to get apart. I've just made that look easy on the video. However, I had to do that off camera in order to get it apart. I was swearing and everything. So be aware that that is a swine to get apart. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first part of the connector apart. We can pull that out through the frame now. And there we go. And the other part we need is where it connects to the horn down here. And these two connectors, pull them off. And then they can now be pulled up through. Uh, 
and there's not a great deal of room in order to get them in. Okay, what I did was, a bit of brute force and ignorance, pulled it through. The, the hole was small. Um, I'll expect be a bit more delicate with putting the new one in, but I didn't see the point in wasting 10 minutes of my life trying to pull that through when it's broken anyway. So what I need to do now is feed this out through the aperture in the frame, which is probably going to be a bit of a pain, but hopefully it'll go quite easy. Oh, there we go. Yep, that was easier than I expected. Now, this cable guide, there we go. And we're almost there. Right. Last but not least, the tie rack, get that out of the way. And hallelujah, she's out. Right, that's junk. What I might do, I might uh, salvage a couple of the bits out, out of it, like the, you know, the horn button's fine, the flash to pass is fine, the indicator switch is actually fine. Um, I do actually require the clutch switch. Um, as we found out in the last video, I do need the clutch switch. Okay, so put that to one side. Yeah, I might um, salvage some bits out of that later. Right. Okay, so here we go. Here's the new one. What we'll do is I'll start by feeding this in to where it needs to go. Push it through the aperture in the frame, and here she comes. And there we go. Right, what I'll do, I'll pop the cable into the cable guide behind there. Just like that, and then we can offer this up. And there we go. Yeah. Nice, right, what I'll do, I'll get the screws in. screws in. I'm only going to put them in loosely. I can sort them out later. I'm not going to tighten them up fully. And there we are. Right, I'll leave that as it is for now. Right, okay, so as we know, the horn has to go down through the stupid little aperture that Suzuki left us with to get it through, which is awfully nice of them. Um, now, the, this is together as one piece, but if push comes to shove, I could always pull it apart, but oh no, it actually went out really, really easily, which is a uh, soft wall. However, I'm not going to complain. Right. Now this connector goes down underneath there, under there, and then up the other side. Okay, there we go. And now all that I need to do is connect her up. Which again doesn't they don't give me a great deal of room to do that, but hopefully I can get it together. 
there we go it clicked clicked into place all I've got to do now is get it back down into its location And there we go. That's that connector refitted back in where it needs to be. Okay, next, let's connect the horn up. Here's the here's the cable for the horn. Just pop her on. Just like that. Robert's your father's brother. Okay, and that is all there is to that. Right then, so that's that switch replaced. All I need to do next uh, is um, replace the clutch slave cylinder. Um, what I'm gonna do is uh, pop the mass, uh, the, uh, Master cylinder, I said slave cylinder, so I meant master cylinder, obviously. And what I'm going to do is put the bolts back in. Give them a little nip up, nothing too strenuous. There we go, just to stop it moving around. Okay, right then, next thing I need to do is uh, I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna replace the uh, reservoir, but first I'm gonna replace the, plate, the uh, clutch lever. Okay, so, uh, to, to remove the stub that's left of the uh, original clutch lever. It's a 10 mil nut on the bottom and just a screw on the top. There's the nut. Take the screw all the way out. There we go. That is uh, the remains of a broken clutch lever. Okay, brand new one. This wasn't expensive. Uh, can't even remember what paid. It wasn't much. Came from MP. Um, but uh, a couple of things actually that I do need to transfer over from this one, and that's this little bush here. And that's trash. This little bush here fits on the uh, fits on the end of the plunger for the uh, master cylinder, and there's a little hole in there. So we need to make sure that that goes in to that hole, which is actually easier said than done. It will go in, but it'll be a pain first. Of that, I've no doubt. There we go. Right. Now then, put the screw in. There we go. Screw her down. Screw it down nice and tight. And then pop the nut on. And then tighten that up. And there we go. And there we have a nice working clutch lever. A little bit of clutch fluid came out there, so what I'll do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to get some uh, get some rag and just clear that up. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Right. Next thing I'm going to do: removal of the uh, the old smashed uh, clutch reservoir. Again, grabbing me JIS. Inside here, there should be a little 
O-ring seal. I'll check the condition of that. Yeah, there we go. A couple of couple of O-ring seals. What I'm going to do, I've uh, I've got replacements for those, so uh, I'll um, pop in a couple of replacements. I'll go grab them out of my box, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, here we go. Two brand new O-rings. Pop them in place. That way, you should avoid any leaks with that. Okay, dokey. Right then. Okay, this is the. Uh, this is the replacement master cylinder. As you can see, the uh, the uh, top cap's a bit chewed, so I probably won't be using that. I did buy another uh, another top cap anyway, so I'm not at liberty to use this one. bit of a clean out before I take it off. Okay. And there we are. Right. Um, obviously, it's an identical uh, master cylinder. What I actually got this one from, I think, I, um, I think I actually ordered this one off of a TLS or a TLR, one of the one of the two. They share the same uh, shame, the same clutch master cylinder as the SV. Um, I couldn't find searching for an SV clutch master cylinder. I couldn't find anything. Searched for a TLS one, found bloody hundreds. So that's what I bought. So. Let's pop this in. There we are. And screw it down nice and tight. Not too tight, don't want to crack it. And that looks pretty good. Okay, brand new, nice little uh, CNC'd, CNC'd aluminium top cap. Um, I did actually look at Fowler's motorcycles for uh, a replacement top cap and a replacement cl um, clutch reservoir. Couldn't buy one, couldn't find one at all anywhere. Um, only place I could find one was on eBay. The, it seems that in order to get the reservoir, you have to buy the whole master cylinder, which seems ludicrous, if I'm being honest. Um, I wasn't prepared to do that, especially as from a dealer. It costs a significant sum of cash. All right, this, uh, I don't want to come out. Okay. That looks quite nice. Obviously, however, is pop the rubber gasket out of the original and fit it to this one. And there we have it. That's the next part of the replacement done. What I want to do, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go to the effort of bleeding it up today. Um, I'll leave that for uh, for the next video. But what I do want to do is I want to refit the uh, the clutch switch. Now the screw is still in the master cylinder from when I removed it before. Yeah. There we 
you go. Right. Now all that remains. Plug the two connectors in. And there we go. And you can you can hear it clicking, so we know it's working. All good. Right. Happy days. So that's all of that replaced. And I think what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do the gear lever today. I'm gonna to, uh, I'm gonna call it a day on that video. But yeah, we're making some significant progress. It's starting to look better here already. Uh, at least we've got a clutch lever now. Um, what I'm going to do next time, I think, and for the next video, episode, uh, the next episode, I will replace the gear lever and we will bleed up the clutch. Um, so we know that the clutch is all working nice. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's going to be good. Um, I've got some ideas on what I do want to do with the colour. Um, I'm thinking powder coat, matte black frame. And I've uh, I've got a I found a picture of an SV in some it's kind of like a GSXR color and I think it looks absolutely stunning. What I'll do I'll pop a picture of that up right now. And um, as you can see, it does look very uh, GSXR esque. Hopefully you'll uh, you'll agree with me that it looks pretty fantastic. And I think that's probably where I'm going to go with this. Okay, guys. Um, well, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I, I enjoy tinkering around with things like this. It's uh, it's it's just a basic strip and replacement. It's not it's nothing too challenging, but you know it's uh, it's good fun nonetheless. It's always good to have a hobby. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you all again for the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye bye now, guys.